Project Workbench. Dr. Caligari, I did several years ago, it was a silent film, it was a huge, in the 1913. So they got this idea to do it with dialogue, and what they did, they took the original settings, they were able to digitally lift out the settings. Hmm. Oh, so they, wow. they put levels and everything for us to walk on, we had the white makeup, yeah. and they laid that in, so everything you see in the film <clears throat> is on the original set, but it's a talkie. And also, it's a bit melodrama, mel uh, you know, melodramic, a melodrama. Yeah. But it was such fun. It didn't do too well, but I thought it was a damn good, uh, hmm. that's amazing. A damn good that thing they can to do. do. Yeah, from yeah. 1913. You know, it's like that. When was that first vampire? Sorry. What do you? What was it called? Nosferatu. Yeah. Yeah. The black and white. I worked with him too, Klaus Kensky. I worked with Klaus twice. Richard, tell me again. When did you start acting? 1930? No, 40? No, no, no. What do you mean 30? Um, <laughs> well, it was 60 started, years ago, right? Well, I was I studied music in school when I was very. I started in the sixth grade. I I, um, I, I was in the I, fife and drum corps. And I started taking you know, a, a vibraphone or glockenspiel and all that. Then I played into school, and then when I got I got into the band in at Busting a High, and we used to do weekend bookings. Weekend bookings. We picked up twenty bucks at a wedding or something. And there were a bunch of people there. That Playing the glockenspiel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, big, I big hit. The okay. <laughs> glockenspiel was in the marching band. Uh, okay. The marching band. It's mm -hmm. always good, you know, if you're a drummer like that, to have a second instrument like a vibe or a glockenspiel yeah, or something right. like that. Yeah. They expect it. And um, I met up these, I met <laughs> these actors from Harvard and BU and Boston College and everything. They were using the rehearsal space at the school. And they invited me to audition for a radio show, which I did. Um, and then I went on from there, but that was, um, I started, I think it was in the seventh grade, I started doing some community theater, and uh, while I was in high school, I, I apprenticed, and before I got out of high school, I had my equity card, I was a member of the union, and I was going to go to BU, and I said, F*** it, I'm not going to go to BU. <laughs> I uh, went down to New York, I auditioned, and I got a job in summer stock, up in Maine, it was beautiful. Oh, yeah. Just beautiful. Then I came back and I got a road show. And then my mother sent me a, a telegram because she had a thing. I had uh, had my physical for the Army. This was in 1953. And I got something called a status undetermined because I had a lot of cuts in my left knee. I, I injured it. And they took me. So I had to get back to, uh, back to Boston in the service. And after that, I went to New York. Yeah, I started very young. Mm. And I starved for two or three years in New York. Mm. Uh -huh. But it was fun, you know. But it was very hard because, uh, see, the kids today don't get a chance to go knocking on the doors. They don't have summer stock. Mm. The road shows now are so expensive, unless they have a big TV name. And even Broadway now, it's just so expensive. There used to be so many Broadway shows, so many opera shows. You could audition, you'd get a job, you know. Yeah. And you could get, you know, the kind of experience you'd want. Because I stayed in New York uh, in the theater for, and on, on road shows for 30 years. I came out here late. Yeah. I came out here late. And I still miss it. But I don't have the energy to do it. I couldn't, you gotta have, I don't have any more stage yeah. energy. You know, you're at the age where you could do eight performances a week. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. I don't know, really? You do one Friday, two Saturday, two Sunday sometimes. Okay. You do a I marathon. Yeah. No, but if you came across something that you really, really liked, yeah. you know, you probably want to do it. And it, it would be, um, have you done any stage work? Mm -mm. Boy, I'll tell you, the first time you do it, it's going to be... Well, now, yeah. to be fair, you've it's been... Be a great feeling for you. Your, yeah. your panels and your presentations and stuff are very similar. You're not, you're not doing dialogue. So, yeah. But yeah, well, you get you get that audience participation when you go to come That's your time. partner. You see, when you do theater, you must make sure that you partner with the audience. Uh -huh. Because they, you know, they're there. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, yeah, Comic-Con's uh, a little unique because when you have a panel, they've come to see you, and so they're already with you. Oh, yeah. They're already there to see yeah, yeah. and and They know what you. they're getting. They, they know what they're getting, and, and yeah. you know, as long as you... You know what it is that they want to hear. You can 
Are you ready for Richard? You know, that's that's so true. People, kids getting out of school now, all of the regular schools and the theater schools, they, the opportunities are so few. Mm -hmm. And in the film business, too, you know, um, we've lost so much of it. And that's really our own fault. Because, uh, you know, they didn't get on the bandwagon early enough. Like those shows in New York the, that Wolf does, all of those Law & Order shows. Oh, yeah. The actors the there, they, they told yeah. them that, you know, they wanted us to go out to California because it was cheaper and this and that. And, you know, and um, so the actors got together and they just told them, we'll take a cut. Mm -hmm. And so did the crew. To stay in New York. They had their kids in the schools. They, yeah. had, they all sure. took a 15% cut. And, they, and you know how you get your perks when you're under contract? You get a, a five-year contract, like you're between, you're on your third year, you get a perk, your fourth year. They turned down one-year perk because they wanted to stay in New York. Now, that's people here, you know, if you took a little less, everybody, more people would wear That's gone now. It's all gone. Mm -hmm. Every bit of it is gone. And it was cheaper to make movies. It's impossible now, you know, it's just so expensive. And that's a shame because, it, you know, the people in the crew and the, the artists and the scenic designers, and it puts everybody out of work. Yeah. It puts the guy, you know, in the neighborhood who does the cleaning. And, you know, that's why, you know, they didn't realize about this tax incentive. Everybody gives such great tax incentives, which allows them to take out a certain amount of money that you spend in the tape. Mm -hmm. We were dragging our ass here. We let it go and it just... Yeah. I thought Schwarzenegger was real. I did his first movie, too. Hercules Goes Bananas. <laughs> I did it in New York before he, they called him Michael Strong and they dubbed his voice. <laughs> yeah, he was a great guy. He helped my son who was, became a trainer later. But I really thought that um, the guy that made that movie, it didn't do well at all. It was originally called Hercules in New York mm -hmm. and went nowhere. But as soon as uh, Arnold started getting popular, he retitled it and starred in Arnold Schwarzenegger, Hercules Goes Bananas. He made a uh, load of money. I think it's a much more compelling title, Hercules Goes Bananas. Yeah. I mean, that, that's something I want to see. That's marketing. Yeah. Yeah. We shot, he didn't get so. any permits. We just ran around, uh, shot in Central Park, here or there. We, I mean, it was, and a very, very light equipment, hardly any lights, you know. Yeah. And it's a real lot of And his, his, his sidekick, this is funny, oh, no. not like a Danny DeVito character. You know the, the old comic, Arnold Stang, about that big? That was his sidekick and best friend. But I had, I really can't, I voted on him. I voted for him. Yeah. For the tax incentive. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's tough. It's tough.